okay, this is totally a Captain Obvious observation, but we're living in divided times. And I think all of us feel it personally in, in some way. Just thinking about our world, you've got countries right now warring against one another and the surrounding countries picking sides on who they're gonna help and lend a hand to. And then within those allied countries, the countries are divided on who they should be helping. It's just, it's chaos, it's division. Uh, in our country, you've got people who are divided over politics and culture and this upcoming election in November just turns the pressure up again. And that bleeds into our churches and our families and relationships. Um, even down into our core level as individuals, we are conflicted sometimes on what does it mean to follow Jesus and participate politically and culturally in the world I live in in a way that reflects Jesus. Uh, we're living in divided times. And we wanna lean into that this summer and tackle some of this. And over the next 10 weeks, we're gonna be in a series we're calling Centered Even in Divided Times. And we're gonna be exploring 10 biblical truths that really help center us on Jesus even in the most crazy of times. And every truth will build a framework that's gonna help us and guide us in reflecting the heart of, and vision of Jesus. Our first truth that we saw this week is that Jesus is king. He's not king among many, but he's the one who sits enthroned over every single king, president, prime minister, dictators. The seat of authority and power isn't Washington, it's DC, it's not London, Moscow, uh, it's at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And this past Sunday, I mentioned that this reality relieves and it should regulate us. Here's how it can relieve. No matter who wins or loses the election in America this year, whatever color Congress becomes, whoever sits in leadership over the state of Washington, or whatever laws change, Jesus is king. He's ultimately the one who's in charge, so we don't have to live and worry and fear, and we really truly can trust the wisdom of the king as he governs the universe. But here's how it regulates, and this one's challenging. If Jesus is king, then we cannot give our full attention and allegiance to any human leader or human kingdom. It needs to go to Jesus. And when we do this, every human leader becomes just that, human. And every human kingdom becomes just that, human. Flawed, weak, and ultimately answerable to the true king. But what does this look like practically at the individual level? Well, when my candidate wins, my excitement and my hope should be right-sized. Because if I'm a Christian, how can I glory in a human leader and put more trust in him or her than I do Jesus? If my candidate loses, my disappointment and worry should not outsize my trust and my hope in the rule and power of Jesus. How can it if I'm trusting Jesus? If Jesus is king, whether my candidate wins or loses, I can stay steady in my faith in Jesus because, well, he reigns over everything. And the same thing can be said about anything happening in your life, in our community, in our nation, or in our world. And the clarity and the joy that comes with grasping this really makes us a people who can cultivate unity and peace, not only in our own lives, but in the people and the community around us. So Jesus is king, and let's be a people who trust him as the king.